We shipped our car to Puerto Rico. There are multiple ways to get your car there, but we chose to go directly to Crowley. And with Crowley having two departure ports, one in Philly, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Eddie Stone actually, and one in Florida, we chose to use the departure port in uh, Philadelphia, which was uh, closer to Vermont, uh, which is where we are at the time. So basically what we did, we took our car down to uh, the port, dropped it off, stayed in a hotel overnight, and then flew out of Philadelphia to Puerto Rico the next day. I initially got a quote from Crowley in June of uh, $1,443 to ship the car. Uh, and that included $344 of, uh, to insure the car for $25,000 during the trip. Uh, that quote was good for 30 days. We weren't planning to ship the car within 30 days, so I needed to go back uh, in the November time frame and get another quote. Uh, at that point in time, the shipping cost had it increased to about $1,800. And um, I also, because our car was brand new and was worth more than $25,000, I increased the insurance uh, cost on that. So a total cost uh, with the increased insurance was uh, $2,100. Uh, I've since heard from other people uh, that uh, their car, their auto insurance would cover, cover their car in transit. Uh, I'm not sure that would be the case with our insurance carrier. Our insurance carrier you know, basically told me initially that um, they would not even cover my car in Puerto Rico. However, once the car got to Puerto Rico, I called them back again after talking to someone else, and uh, they told me that they would cover the car for 30 days there. But uh, that's so certainly something to talk to your insurance carrier about, whether they're going to cover your car in Puerto Rico and whether they will cover your car during the, cost, during the, uh, the shipment. And if that's the case, you can save yourself multiple hundreds of dollars uh, by uh, declining the Crowley insurance. Getting to the terminal in Philadelphia was relatively easy. Again, like I said, very close to the airport. In one quarter mile, arrive at 1 Seville Avenue on the left. Arriving at 1 Seville Avenue on the left. Once in the terminal, um, you know they'll tell you where to go. You know it's a, again, it's a uh, it's a cargo terminal. They're, they're used to shipping you know cargo and containers. You know so the car shipping is sort of a side business. Uh, so there's no signs uh, on on or any you know set thing you have to do. They basically told me to go to this one area and park. I parked there. Someone came, you know, and uh, and told me that I could go eventually go into the admin building. Pull in here and wait for an escort. All right, so I got a vest. So I came to know what to do. That is to uh, walk down here to a little house with my paperwork and get checked in, leave the car where it is, and uh, they'll tell me what to do then. So walking down to the yellow brick road. to the customer service building. <laughs> I walked to the admin building, you know, took care of my paperwork. It was all prepaid at that point in time. Uh, they told me to go back and wait in my car. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for an escort. Uh, eventually the escort came and uh, they escorted me through a warehouse and uh, pointed to a place where I could park the car. I parked the car, someone came, 
They ran a cursory inspection of the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Following the inspector, we're gonna inspect the vehicle here. Drive it into the warehouse. Next to some other people. Okay. Get inspected. Left the keys in the cup holder. Inside the warehouse. And uh, back to the admin building to finalize the paperwork. And off I went. All right. After the inspection, got my paper. I now, with my vest, I walk back over to customer service. And we should be good to go. Back over to customer service. You know, little yellow brick road here. But I got my vest on, so I should be good to go. And the car's dropped off. Less than an hour, and uh, 20 minutes of that was waiting for people to uh, come back from lunch. So that's uh, pretty efficient. Uh, of course, not too many people here today. The car will probably ship out next week, and uh, supposedly takes about eight days or so. So now we have to go find a uh, Uber, takes back to the hotel, and uh, we're good to go. place here for all this stuff going in and out and terminals there it is and terminals and here comes my uber driver so back to the hotel pretty quick simple and we're good to go pretty easy pretty simple process my process took I guess a little over an hour uh, principally because I went uh, happened to be there during lunchtime and uh, there, there no one there's no one in the admin building <clears throat> you know to process me at, at that point in time a, uh, a word of or word of caution but they'll tell you that is that um, you know they won't ship your car with more than a quarter tank of gasoline and they won't they won't ship your car with any personal items in it so we made sure we took out all our personal items and uh, you know we had probably probably an eighth of a tank of gasoline when we got there Usually the shipping time to Puerto Rico is eight days, you know, from when the uh, the ship leaves port. Uh, we dropped our car off on a Friday. The normal shipping day was Wednesday. And, uh, you know, so we expected to not have our car for about two weeks, uh, which was which was okay. Uh, we did get notification that there was a delay in, uh, the, in the ship leaving the port in Philadelphia for a few more days. So, you know, it was about two and a half weeks before our, our car showed up at the port. But I got an email notification telling me it was there. And uh, we went up to uh, went up to San Juan. Uh, Lisa dropped me off, and uh, you know at the uh, at the terminal, she went to return the rental car. I was going to go pick her up at the airport. Uh, you know after after I successfully uh, extracted the car from the lot, I uh, went into the lot, and I uh, was immediately told that I could no longer take any videos because it was a secure area. Okay, going to. Morning. Uh, so uh, there's no real videos from inside, but again, they had an admin building, you know, where I had to go to, and um, you know, show my paperwork. They told me that uh, I need to go to my car to pick up a uh, pick up another piece of paper, you know, which would would have the uh, you know the arbitrios, which is the import tax uh, information on it. With that Im import tax information, I could then either pay the import tax with a uh, online account uh, to Hacienda, or they have some uh, some vans there with people who run a business uh, of, uh, of doing that for you. I paid the fee, $65, let them do it for me. Uh, that process took a little longer than, than normal, uh, it was from what other people have told me, but uh, it took me like 45 minutes or so you know, to go in there. I don't know what the problem was uh, supposedly at Hacienda because uh, the people there, I was the only one in line at, at the van, uh, but uh, it still took uh, an extended period of time, again, maybe because of, of lunchtime. Uh, so what I will say is that for us, because it was a new car, paying the Arbitrios was very, very, very expensive. And if I, I had to do it again with, with our car, um, I'm not sure that I would have shipped it. 
Um, certainly older cars, you know, the cost, the cost benefit analysis, if you know your car, you know, it runs a little, the calculus runs a little different than ours. Uh, but uh, for ours, you know, in a new car and certain types of cars, it is the import tax is really, really, really expensive. You know, so make sure you understand, you know, how that, how that works financially. So here's the Crowley entrance off to the right. You can park, park for visitors and uh, you go up to this security guard. He will check you in with your driver's license and you walk in, walk in through there. I want to show you here in the parking lot, the end of the parking lot here, there are two trailers and uh, this is where you can go and uh, pay your arbitrios, the, uh, the import tax uh, that will uh, you know, do the Hacienda. I mean, they'll, they'll charge you 65 hours there. You can do it on your own, do it on your phone. But, uh, you know, I figured I'd just let these guys do it. it took them a little while to give me my uh, authorization. But I do have my authorization right now. Um, so I took the, the paperwork, the, the certification from from uh, the Hacienda back into the admin building, some final paperwork, they signed off on a sheet of paper and it was back out to the lot to go find my car again. All right, here's the lot again. Obviously uh, over there, there's a lot of uh, containers coming in, unloading this uh, ship right in front of us. Got the cranes walking back and forth, but here's the car lot. And over here is our little baby. around here. Already gotten caught twice taking video here. Men are looking for the exit gate. Tell me if he's down here somewhere. Far corner. I'm gonna follow this guy. I think this guy's leaning on a long long way. Oh, this guy. Oh, there it is. There's the exit gate. And we're out. Took us uh, two hours and eight minutes. That included 30 minutes waiting for him to come back from lunch. So, uh, not, uh, not world record time, but uh, not so bad. Anyway. We hope you like our little tour through the Crowley terminals, both in Philadelphia and in, in San Juan, Isla Verde in Isla Grande in San Juan. And uh, the process of, of shipping our car is not so bad, um, although it can be a little expensive. You know, so uh, again, you know, work out those numbers for yourself. But anyhow, until next time, may your suitcase always be messy and, and uh, ensure that you ring the bell to be notified of our upcoming videos. Hasta la vista.